Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. High drama as Congress leader Rahul Gandhi visits India's violence hit Manipur. Activists voice concern over persecution of ethnic minorities by Pakistan and China. And Muslims across South Asia celebrate Eid al-Adha. And now for all the details. A war of words triggered between India's main opposition Congress party and the ruling BJP on Thursday after Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was stopped in violence hit Manipur's Bishnupur district. Rahul Gandhi, who is on a two-day visit to the northeastern state, was stopped by security officials while he was on his way to Churachandpur to meet the victims of the violence. Accusing the BJP of using autocratic methods to disrupt the visit, Congress said the stalling of the convoy is unacceptable and shatters all constitutional and democratic norms. Hitting back, the BJP said Rahul Gandhi's visit is not born out of concern for people but has a selfish political agenda. The local police said the convoy was stopped due to security concerns and the Congress leader was asked to take a chopper instead of going by road. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Wednesday slammed Pakistan for cross-border terrorism and said India cannot have normal relationship with Islamabad until they stop sponsoring terror outfits. Addressing an event in New Delhi, Jay Shankar said it is not in India's interest when a country allows terrorism to happen by night and wants trade by day. He also blamed Pakistan for SARC inactivity in recent years and said India cannot have any SARC meeting until one member continues to engage in acts of terrorism. Uh, we have not had meetings because you have a member of SARC uh, who doesn't conform to all the basic requirements of what a good member should be. And that is today an obstacle really for SARC to meet. You know, uh, as I said, you know, we cannot continue uh, we cannot continue with acts of terrorism and say the you know cooperation will continue will happen nevertheless talking about ties with china the foreign minister said the state of border continues to remain abnormal due to non adherence of agreements by beijing but at the end of the day any relationship has to be based on a high degree of mutuality there has to be a respect uh, for each other's interests, sensitivity for each other's interests, uh, and there has to be an adherence to agreements which were reached between us. And it is that departure from what was agreed between us, uh, which is today at the heart uh, of the uh, of the difficult phase that we are passing through with China. Uh, and the bottom line there is, at the end of the day, the state of the border will determine the state. Uh, of the relationship and the state of the border today is still abnormal. Human rights activists gathered in Geneva this week to voice concern over the persecution of ethnic and religious minorities by Pakistan and China through systematic torture and discrimination. A report. Activists during an event in Geneva on Wednesday raised concern over the cross human rights violations by Pakistan against Baloch. Sindhi and the Pashtuns and against the Uyghur Muslims by China. They highlighted the systematic persecution of the ethnic and religious minorities in both the countries through draconian laws and their armed forces while calling for immediate intervention by the international community. The Pashtun ethnic minority is systematically oppressed by Pakistan in the last 20 years under so-called war on terror. Uh, Pakistan has committed gross human rights violations, including enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, arbitrary detentions, and torture. Even, you know, uh, how can the religious and ethnic minorities can trust Pakistan, the state of Pakistan, in its uh, the military establishment, when even the Prime Minister of, uh, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, cannot file an FIR against uh, uh, the ISI officer uh, who was involved in attempted murder of uh, that former prime minister. 
The activist also said that the China-Pakistan economic corridor that links Uyghur-populated Xinjiang to Gwadar port in Balochistan has brought death and destruction for the indigenous people. CPEC-China-Pakistan economic corridor not only negative impact to the Uyghur's life, also, also so many Baluchi people, Sin people, and the Gilgi people, and the rest of them, a lot of people, destroys his daily life. But unfortunately, entire world, silence. Meanwhile, human rights organization Amnesty International has called Afghanistan's de facto authorities to release Afghan educationist Madhiullah Waisa. In a statement, the rights body said the continued detention of Waisa is a clear violation of the rights of freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. Matiola Waisa, a prominent advocate for girls' right to education, was arrested in March by Taliban forces, accusing him of illegal activities. Since seizing power in 2021, the Taliban administration has barred most girls from high school and women from universities. Taliban officials have said they respect women's rights in line with the strict interpretation of the Islamic law. Sri Lanka announced a restructuring plan for its massive domestic debt on Thursday to meet targets set by the IMF and aim to turn around its crisis-hit economy. The island nation is asking foreign investors in its international sovereign bonds to take a 30% haircut and is seeking similar concessions from holders of its other dollar-denominated bonds, its central bank governor said. Meanwhile, on Thursday, the World Bank also approved 700 million US dollars in budgetary and welfare support for Sri Lanka. The framework will cover part of the country's 46.9 billion US dollars domestic debt, reports suggest. The restructuring program will be presented to Parliament on Saturday for approval. The Supreme Court of Nepal on Wednesday issued an interim order directing the government to register marriages of homosexual couples. The top court has directed the authorities to submit a written response pertaining legal framework for the registration of same-sex marriages. The decision from the Apex Court came after a LGBT right organization in Nepal, Blue Diamond Society, challenged the existing provisions for marriage registration, terming them as obstacles for same-sex couples. In 2008, Nepal's Supreme Court had allowed sexual minorities to marry, but the civil court didn't approve the same-sex marriage. Muslims across the Indian subcontinent celebrated Eid al-Adha by offering mass prayers on Thursday. A huge crowd of devotees was witnessed for prayers at the Mughal-era Jama Masjid in Indian capital New Delhi and at the Taj Mahal in Agra. They later exchanged greetings by hugging and wishing one another on the occasion. One of the Islam's two main festivals, Eid al-Adha, marks the climax of the annual Hajj pilgrimage. The festival is mainly known for slaughtering of goats and other livestock to commemorate the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son on God's command. Today's Eid is the celebration of uh, sacrifices made by our past generation. This is a big learning for our generation and the future generations. Similar scenes were witnessed in neighboring Nepal and Pakistan where thousands of Muslims gathered for mass prayers and remembered Prophet Ibrahim's sacrifice. On the festival of sacrifice, the meat of sacrificial animals is traditionally distributed to the needy and the remainder is for the family and friends. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.